been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Fantasy sports today. Be a guy that's really useful in your fantasy rotation. I think the answer is yes. Game time decisions. And guess what? I'm going to lose the bet because he's injured again. Betting above the rim. He's got a broke jay. That's all there is to it. He's got no confidence in that jump shot. My thing you've always heard me say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In game live all access. Wondering when that was going to happen. And the answer is, uh, it just did. Sometimes you think the bigger guy will have the advantage. Well, if the little guy can move, Joe, it's hard to hit the little guy sometimes when you're a big boy, right? In game live, prime time. Four to one, I'm going to take a little flyer on Justin Rose. In game live, overtime. As you sit here and listen, watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on sports group. Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morenci, the pimps, the players, the hustlers, the people to bust them, and everybody else in between. Let's do this thing Thursday night to throw down a style. There will only be one level, a le- level of rage uh, this evening. We'll welcome our AM radio affiliates in a couple of moments. You know, we sort of uh, all mistimed this uh, a little bit. I don't think anybody thought that the basketball game would be would actually start at 840 Eastern time. And that was a very quick game because it was a long and boring basketball game to watch, but it was quickly played. Game one of the NBA Finals in the books at the Boston Celtics. Dominant performance uh, this evening. We'll get you the updated uh, numbers as far as the series uh, is concerned. Uh, MVP is very intriguing right now, the early MVP watch. And we'll get into this. Uh, But as far as game two, is concerned Sunday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time. The Mavericks are getting seven points, so there's no massive overreaction for tonight's uh, blowout win. Uh, it was six and a half tonight at tip off. It's seven. The total did not challenge uh, tonight uh, as far as the over was concerned. Under betters uh, cash their ticket, except me in the first quarter. Can you believe it? So the game stays under the number as a whole. I talked a lot about liking the first quarter to stay under the number. Well, I didn't know Kristaps Porzingis was going to go off and, and drop 18 effing points, all right, or whatever the hell it was that he scored um, in the first half. In the first quarter, I think he had 11 points in the first quarter. So there was a three that he hit. There was like a minute left, and it was like, man, this actually might stay under 56, actually. And then Porzingis hit another shot. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but maybe you should like put someone on Porzingis that isn't like five foot eight or something like that. Like Porzingis is just shooting over everybody. It's like, you know, th- this isn't going to work. Uh, th- th- this isn't going to work. A complete performance by the Boston Celtics tonight. Dominant performance. It was all about effort. Like, let's just call it out for what it is. And there's a difference between being loose and being unprepared. And I think that was the the balance that the Dallas Mavericks could not find tonight, right? Kyrie Irving is always loose. So Kyrie Irving was laid back and, you know, not, not, nothing phases me. 
Luka Doncic, they said, was in an extra good mood all day, and he seemed to be joking a lot in the pregame warm-up, and he's not nervous at all, right? No, he wasn't nervous at all. That's the problem. Maybe you should be, right? Maybe, maybe you should be. It's the same thing, like, you know, when it comes to sports betting, actually, right? You should be afraid of losing, right? It's like a fighter. They don't, you know, they're afraid of losing. So there's sort of a difference between being loose and, you know, and being unprepared. We saw early, like every loose ball. It was just flat out effort. And it's pretty crazy to say, actually, to say this, that a player, as Luka Doncic became the first player since Tim Duncan, to uh, have a, tr- uh, a double-double in which he scored 30 or more points. So um, he gets the 30 and 10, but Luka did not play well at all tonight. And he was a big problem early in the basketball game. And, you know, all kidding aside, I knew the Mavericks were in a lot of trouble when the Celtics rolled out in the, uh, the Walton T-shirts. You know, I saw they were giving away a Bill Walton pin tonight to everybody, too, right before the game, and I was like, oh, I don't like this. <laughs> Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morenci, the pimps, the players, the hustlers, the people that bust them, and everybody else in between. Shout out to all of our AM radio affiliates stepping up and in. It's the Thursday night uh, throwdown, and the Boston Celtics threw down the Dallas Mavericks uh, tonight. 107-89 uh, final score, a complete team effort uh, by a Boston Celtic team that had as many block shots as the Dallas Mavericks did assists uh, tonight. And listen. I'm not John Wooden, I'm not Nick Vitale, I'm not Phil Jackson, but I can kind of, you know, tell you that that's not good. (laughs) That's not good. If a team has nine block shots and you have nine assists, you're probably not going to win. I don't care what league uh, it's in. A dominant performance by the Boston Celtics uh, tonight. Evidently, there was no ring rust uh, involved for Boston tonight, and specifically, no ring rust at all involved for Kristaps Porzingis. As Kristaps Porzingis set the tone early in this basketball game with a dominant first quarter and first half performance off the um, off the bench. He just couldn't miss. And so many people sort of dismissed his his return. Well, we'll see how he holds up. I don't expect him to last. We'll see if he plays. And I wasn't part of that crew, but I was part of the, well, How is he going to alter the chemistry that they've had, considering he hasn't played since April the 29th? Well, you know, he did alter the chemistry for the better. You know, what can you say about the Boston Celtics uh, tonight? Each and every one of them stepped up. All five starters, double digits. uh, Porzingis, 20, off the bench uh, tonight. The much maligned and often criticized Jason Tatum, as we discussed when, for whatever reason, the media is always trying to start something that isn't there, believing that Jason Tatum is somehow jealous of Jalen Brown because he didn't win the MVP of the Eastern Conference Finals. And we all know that Jason Tatum is going to be judged by a banner. All right? Jason Tatum can score 52 points in every NBA Finals game for the rest of his career, but if they lose... um, they lose the series and they lose the finals if they're in. It doesn't matter. Tatum's at the point of his career right now where, you know what, 16 points, 11 rebounds, and five assists, pretty badass. Across the board, you could debate um, who the most dominant player for the Boston Celtics uh, was tonight, but they all played their roles. Uh, Drew Holiday was brought in to be that, you know, final piece, a championship uh, player, somebody that does, uh, you know, Always in the right place at the right time. And that's not a coincidence uh, with players. Just a championship caliber guy that you want on your basketball team. Drew Holiday steps up tonight. 12 points, plays great defense, was a plus minus plus 20 uh, tonight. The Dallas Mavericks are going to have to be better, a lot better. And there's a difference between being loose and unprepared. And I'll tell you what, the Dallas Mavericks were unprepared uh, tonight. The defensive adjustments never came on Porzingis, uh, Luka Doncic, despite dropping 30, it was probably the softest 30 in the history of basketball. You could tell early in the basketball game that shots that normally Luka makes drunk and blindfolded, all right, with his buddies in a back in a backyard, they weren't falling. 
Like, you know, like he never misses these little floaters and, and little layups. They weren't, they were spinning out, they were rattling out. The role players for the Dallas Mavericks seem overwhelmed uh, tonight. And listen, this series is far from over, but the Dallas Mavericks are going to have to dial things up. But there has been a pattern that I didn't, I didn't follow in which the Boston Celtics show up and then take the pedal off the metal in game two. I was sort of positive to be trying to talk myself into the fact that the Dallas Mavericks would come in here and punch them in the mouth early. But if this was a fight, they would have stopped uh, this fight. The Dallas Mavericks showed life briefly four moments, and they cut the lead to like eight points, which was impressive considering they were down 29. Uh, but you can't play uphill like that all night. So now we head into uh, Sunday night. The uh, Boston Celtics are seven-point favorites in a basketball game. The total is 214 and a half. As far as the updated series price uh, is concerned right now, the uh, Boston Celtics are minus 380 favorites uh, to win the NBA championship. Dallas Mavericks in the plus 300 uh, range right now. And listen, it's only one game. The Mavericks got lit up by the Clippers. We've seen this in the past. There's going to be an overreaction. Uh, but with all that being stated, we just gave you the number of, uh, of the series. And the Celtics is, are as high as like minus 400 and 420 at some spots uh, right now. Early MVP watch, Jalen Brown. This is Portrait. gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. media markets in the country so it makes some sense but i gotta tell you philadelphia not far behind cleveland ohio not far behind i would guess that precedent is now set they now would be paying based on the last 12 months numbers they'd be paying an additional 81.6 million in taxes newswire only on sports grid This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morenci. The Pencil Players, the Hustlers, the people, the bus, but everybody else in between. Shout out to everybody uh, joining us on Sirius XM Channel 159. And um, a program alert. We're going to be on tomorrow night at our regularly uh, scheduled time. But we're only on two hours tomorrow night due to uh, live golf uh, coverage on the grid. So um, you've been uh, you've been updated. All right. But as I always say, just follow me on Twitter. At uh, Sports Rage, we don't get preempted very much throughout the year, but there's always going to be random circumstances. 
such as tonight with the uh, with the NBA Finals. Um, so game one of the NBA Finals, a complete uh, blowout, and like really, and I, I you know I see the criticism online, and you know if you think about it, unless you're a Boston Celtic fan, and or a better who bet on you know, but let's take betting out of it, right? There's too much you know, betting this, betting that. Even I'm you know, and I say that as a degenerate better, right? So, but even I'm like, you know, it has nothing to do with betting. But just from an entertainment standpoint, this is the problem with the NBA, right? Like, you know, you look back at, you know, the, the playoffs, there were some really good series. We had seven-game series. We had a couple of close games. But for the most part, the NBA, their games are blowouts. Even when it's two good teams playing against each other, right? One team will blow the other team out. Then the other team will blow the other team out. And it's just rinse and repeat. And, you know, this series is far from done, but from an entertainment standpoint, it was, you know, it wasn't the best basketball that was played tonight. The Dallas Mavericks looked like a preseason basketball team. And there were a lot of telltale signs early. Um, just from a cosmic standpoint, the fact that they, they dipped into the Bill Walton magic tonight, that didn't hurt the Celtics at all. But I'll tell you what, the Celtics at times in the past, and we've seen this in the postseason, they're, they are the ones who are flat, specifically at home, right? The, man, the Celtics have been in, you know, five of the last seven conference championships. They're back in the finals again. They played a lot of big playoff games over the years. They haven't won a championship because they haven't won at home. They haven't, you know, the, the one knock on the Boston Celtics, as good as they are uh, in all facets of their game, is that they lack an intensity. They lack a killer instinct. Well... Man, the, the Boston Celtics tonight were like a pit bull on a poodle, all right? And shout out to our boy Steve Ludzig, um, who um, used to be the coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning, played for the Chicago Blackhawks that we used to do uh, shows with. And he said, Gabe, they're all over us like a bunch of pit bulls, and we were a bunch of poodles. <laughs> Talking about the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, when he coached the team. But – you know, the Boston Celtics, like, they, they got to every loose ball. They were intense, right? Like, they they were intense. Every play mattered. Look at, like, there was a sequence early in the basketball game. The Celtics missed, like, four three-point shots in a row, and they kept on getting the rebound. And everybody on Dallas is just watching it and standing around, sort of, you know, the, the fake street ball defense. Well, you know, the ball's bouncing off the rim. I'll sort of stick my arm out, but I'm not really going to run over there and really try to bust my balls to get the ball. Boston did. Oh, look, man, Luka, Luka Doncic got his pocket picked. Luka's casually, you know, walking the ball up the court. Jalen Brown just comes up and takes it from him and lays it, you know, a thunderous dunk. Those are big momentum changes. Like, and, you know, if, I'm not going to call Luka Doncic out. The guy's a great player, and he will bounce back. Point blank, he will bounce back. But, I mean, so he was the first, he's the first player to have a, a, tr- a double-double in which he scored 30 or more points since Tim Duncan in 99. Good for you. This is when, you know, when the modern people always talk, and you know, oh, this guy, is, is he better than Larry Bird? Is this better than that? Take your stats and shove them, all right? Analytics. What are the first four letters of, uh, of analytics? Figure it out. So, he could have 30 points. He was terrible. There was a lack of intensity. He got, he got his pocket picked. And they in a, really early in the game, too, there was a sequence where, you know, it was tied or whatever. They're going back and forth. There's a Boston are missing shots. But Dallas are letting them shoot over and over and going to let them eventually get hot. Right? I mean, if you take eight three-point shots in, in five minutes, you know, chances are three or four of them will eventually go in. So, Luca got a rebound and sort of just casually, you know, like try to look cool, rein it in with one hand. Yeah, one out of bounds, and then Boston scored after. So, you know, dude, it's the NBA Finals. All these possessions count. You're walking the ball up the court. Jalen Brown comes up to you and steals the ball and dunks it. That can't happen. You know, dude, that can't happen. Like, imagine if that was Chris Paul. People, oh, look at Chris Paul. Oh, he got his pocket picked. You know, like, Luca was not ready tonight. And for a player that, you know, has won the Euro League Championship before, 
um, as a player that's played in big time international games for his country before. And I mean, we, we know this guy's a great player and we know he's normally very good in the clutch. He wasn't tonight. How many times did Luca miss shots early that, and you know, missing shots is one, you know, I'm not going to call a guy for missing shots, but even worse, you know what he looked like tonight? He looked like Harden used to on the Houston Rockets, where at times when Harden was off, he'd wait till there's like two seconds left in a shot clock, and he'd just sort of pass it to someone in a bad spot, and they'd be screwed. Luca did that numerous times tonight. How many times did Luca take it into the paint, and where he does his little thing, and he backs you up, and he turns around, whatever, and he's got a couple of moves, that it's unstoppable, that did he get in front of the basket and say, you know what, I'm going to pass it to this kid lively that is perpendicular under the basket right now, and it's nowhere near as good as I am, but I'm going to pass it to him anyway instead of just taking a shot. Like, Luca passed up a lot of, like, easy little, what do they call them, bunnies, uh, per se, chip shots, whatever you want to call them, floaters, shots that, like, you know what I mean? He didn't take them. It wasn't like, oh, I'm missing them. You didn't take them. You didn't take them. A very baffling performance from Luca. Okay, um, countdown to the Belmont Stakes is on, and we're lucky we've got one of the best uh, cappers in the business. Caitlin Free is going to join us. We've got Dave Delano a little bit later on. We've got Dave Delano's take on the NBA Finals, Stanley Cup Finals, and we've been talking about this on Twitter. I guarantee you the Stanley Cup Finals game one on Saturday will be more entertaining than that crap was tonight. This is Sports Rage. Gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. media markets in the country so it makes some sense but i gotta tell you philadelphia not far behind cleveland ohio not far behind i would guess that precedent is now set they now would be paying based on the last 12 months numbers they'd be paying an additional 81.6 million in taxes newswire only on sports grid This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morenci, Sirius XM Channel 159 on the Sports Grid Radio and Television Network. Shout out to all of our television uh, affiliates, networks, apps, and uh, everything else in between. Normally, we're on for three hours, 180-minute full-court press. We've only got one hour tonight, so I find myself talking even faster than normal. I'm like, we got to get into this, we got to get into that. So much stuff going on. NBA Finals Game 1 is done, but the countdown to the Belmont Stakes is on. But, of course... 
Very interesting uh, this year at beautiful Saratoga um, this year. Let's bring in one of the best uh, horse cappers in the game. She helped us break down the Preakness. Caitlin Free in the house. Caitlin, always a pleasure. Thanks a lot for joining us, especially in the late night hours. I know you're not on the West Coast, so I appreciate it. What's up, Gabe? Happy to be joining you. And uh, time, it just is what it is at this point. We'll rest uh, when we're dead. Yeah, you know what? No rest for the wicked. And it's always an exciting time uh, before a big race uh, like this. An interesting dynamic, right? Normally the Belmont known as, you know, the final endurance test after the first two races. But since it's in Saratoga uh, now, it's going to be the same distance at the um, uh, as it was at the Kentucky Derby. Is that good, bad? What's your take on that for any specific horse, tra you know, trainer, jockey uh, coming into this race that it isn't uh, the mile and a half? Well, I think it kind of makes it a little bit more of an interesting type of race because you have some horses in here that if it was the traditional mile and a half, you probably wouldn't see them in this race. I don't think Seize the Gray would be in here. I don't think Mystic Dan would be running back if it was a mile and a half. Probably a couple other ones. Doorknock, I would say, probably wouldn't be going a mile and a half. Um, and maybe a couple of the other ones. So the fact that it's a mile and a quarter uh, kind of makes a lot of those connections coming out of the Kentucky Derby or coming out of the Preakness want to give it one last shot since you're not going uh, that mile and a half. Typically, you don't see many horses run in all three legs of the Triple Crown unless you're going for a Triple Crown. Um, but he's the great at run in the Kentucky Derby, but he did run on Kentucky Derby Day. Mystic Dan, of course, will run in all three races. And then we have a few horses coming out of the Kentucky Derby and going to the Belmont that maybe wouldn't have in a year when it was a mile and a half. And it's interesting, the, the odds makers and the betting market responds to this, right? The fact that the previous winners of the first two races aren't the favorites of this race. Not even close. Uh, I believe Mystic Dan's the third choice up there at 5-1. to one, And uh, sees the Gray getting a little bit disrespected up there at 8-1. to one. He's the uh, fourth choice. And that race, but is a little bit of a higher fourth choice, I would say, behind uh, Mystic Dan sees the gray. Of course, Sierra Leone is the favorite. And then Mind Frame, a horse that's not run in any of the three races, going to uh, run in the Belmont. Do you like the, the fresh horse uh, angle when a, when a trainer and a, and a barn has just been sitting on a horse waiting for the right spot? Or is there the argument that, wow, the horse wasn't good enough for the, 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 the Kentucky Derby, how is it going to win now? My thing with Mind Frame is he's a horse that I think is good enough to win the race, but I, I feel like I can poke a couple of holes uh, in his in his races. I think the distance is good for him. I think he'll easily go a mile and a quarter because he ran really well going a mile and a 16th. Um, my thing with this horse is, is he's ran on Lasix, which is the race day medication in both of his career starts. So not only is he taking a giant, step up in class going into grade one company and going against, you know, the other two winners of the other two legs of the triple crown. And then a horse like Sierra Leone, he has to come off of Lasix for the first time and a horse that is going to be taking so much money and based off of only having two career wins, one, he's unexposed to, he's getting a, what you call equipment change coming off of the Lasix. So up there at seven to two, he's just not going to be for me. For, for, for the casual better, there seems to be attractive odds though, Caitlin, for this race, right? I mean, Absolutely. you know, there's double digit odds for almost every horse, you know, for the most part uh, here. And, you know, a horse that I'm somewhat surprised about the odds of, you talked about uh, Seize the Gray getting a little bit disrespected. What about uh, Honor Marie getting a little bit disrespected uh, here at 12 to 1? Absolutely. Honor Marie is a horse that I'm really interested in in this race because if you go back and you watch the Kentucky Derby and you focus on just Honor Marie, out of every single horse in the race, I think you could probably make the case he had the worst type of a trip. Um, in that race, he kind of got jostled around hard. He lost a lot of ground, but was still running on Lady and ended up finishing eighth in the race. So he still was able to kind of hang on to his own in that aspect, but he did have one of the worst trips of the race. So he's going to be coming into this race with 10 less horses to deal, deal with, and I have seen him out in the mornings. I've also seen some footage of him since he's gotten to Saratoga. He's a horse that is really kind of peaking at the right time, and he's training really well. So More, he's gonna hold on, Caitlin. More on the other side with Caitlin Frey.
Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. media markets in the country so it makes some sense but i gotta tell you philadelphia not far behind cleveland ohio not far behind i would guess that precedent is now set they now would be paying based on the last 12 months numbers they'd be paying an additional 81.6 million in taxes newswire only on sports grid This is Sports Rage. I am Gable Morancy. All right, we've got another segment with uh, Caitlin. I'm going to give her the floor, but very intriguing uh, race. Some some great uh, horses uh, in this in this race. And let's. I'm just going to blast through them here and sort of get your quick thoughts. We'll go rapid fire. So Sierra Leone, we're talking about a horse that's like two noses away from being undefeated, right? So yeah. Uh, but does the wear and tear catch up? What's your take on this horse? This is the horse to beat in this race without a doubt. There's been some changes on this horse. He's got a new rider. Flavian Pratt is going to be aboard this time. He's also had a big equipment change. He's got a new type of a bit, which if you watch his race in the Kentucky Derby, he was trying to lug around. He was trying to move. He was leaning on the other horse. He's got a little bit more of a bigger type of a bit that's going to give more steering power to the jockey. It's what's called a cage bit. So it's a bigger type of bit that has a little bit more equipment underneath of it. So he's going to be able to hold him in a little bit tighter. The bit's not going to wiggle around as much. So he's going to have a little bit more steering power to kind of move the horse in and out. So I think that's going to really help this horse. He's much the horse to beat in this race. We'll just have to see if a mile and a quarter is long enough for him. We talked about Honor Marie and you agreed that, you know, 12 to one odd seems like a dangerous horse. Yeah. Mind frame. Um yeah, you know, it seems like the odds are a little short for mind frame. It's just in my opinion. I look, I'm like, really? Why? You know, it seems a little light here. Is there a good reason to bet on mind frame, or is it a, is it a scratch for you? Honestly, he's a horse that I'm kind of willing to toss. He's only had two races. He doesn't have quite the foundation that a lot of other horses do. Of course, you get Irad Ortiz aboard for the Todd Fletcher Barn. You can't go wrong with that. And he's had two impressive wins, but I kind of mentioned it a little bit. He is coming off the race day Lasix medication because you're not allowed to use Lasix in stakes races. He's waiting into grade one company. So that's a lot to ask of a horse trying a race like the Belmont Stakes for the first time, getting off Lasix and then taking on horses of this caliber. At seven to two, he's just not for me. What about resilience? Um, similar situation. Now, you know, 10 less horses to deal with. Uh, finish six uh, in the Derby. What's your opinion on resilience? I think he's really sneaky, kind of like Honor Marie is. Um, he didn't have a bad trip the way Honor Marie did, but there was one point where he came off the turn into the stretch. He loomed up, and Travis Stone even said when this horse was coming around the turn, he thought this horse was making the winning move and was going to win the Kentucky Derby. So he did make a good move. May have just been a little bit of a race too soon for him. And like you said, has 10 less horses to deal with. He is a horse that has ran in New York before, and he's a horse that was supposed to get better with time. So I think resilience is coming in with a sneaky chance. 
would you agree? And, you know, you said off the top, too, it doesn't seem like people, especially Mystic Dan, uh, you know, it sees the gray being disrespected. And between the two of them, would you fade and stay away from Mystic Dan more? Um, and, you know, Mystic Dan has won two of the last three races in the mud as well. It, you know, to me, it just doesn't feel like a Mystic Dan weekend this weekend, uh, Caitlin. Mm-hmm. But is it a seize the gray uh, Saturday? What's your opinion on on these two horses? I would probably defer more to seize the gray. I don't think he's going to necessarily get an easy type of lead the way he did in the Preakness. I think Doorknock's going to be up there and be close to him. My thing with Mystic Dan is he ran a really good race in the Preakness, but he had every opportunity to come and get seize the gray. And I just think it's a lot to ask of this horse to still, you know, keep continuing to go on with him. He could run a big race. He could completely surprise us. There might be a little bit of moisture left in the track because there is going to be a little bit of rain on Friday. So maybe still a little bit on the wetter, good type of a fast side come Belmont Stakes Day when we get to that race later on in the evening. But uh, Mystic Dan, I think the time that you had to have him was obviously in the Kentucky Derby. He could have very easily won the Preakness, just couldn't get quite uh, to seize the gray. But a fresh horse like Sierra Leone, like Mind Frame, Honor Marie and Resilience that he beat in the Kentucky Derby. He's had one extra race than they have, and it was a tough race in the Preakness. So I'm going to be out on the sick Dan this weekend. And uh, to close out, so I'll give you the floor here. Are there any of the longer shots that, uh, that catch your eye? Like um, uh, Wine Stewart. I know Wine Stewart's never been worse than second in a race before, but it's a massive step up in class here. So there are some like some odds here, but anything on, on the uh, larger end of the longer shots? of the horses that people are talking about catch your eye caitlin the wine steward he's one for one at saratoga he could be the type of a horse that maybe finishes in the money at a little bit of a price antiquarian is a horse that i think is very very interesting in this race he's only ran one uh, bad race and it was when he broke through the gate and was on really really bad behavior in the louisiana derby that's the race uh, honor marie comes out of catching freedom won that race but the race that he won before that where he really showed that he's more of a distance type of horse was the peter pan kind of got bumped a little bit, but he still ran a really, really good race to get up and get uh, the job done in there. This is going to be another one of the Todd Fletcher runners, but he took a very similar path that Arcangelo took to winning the Belmont Stakes last year. So I think Antiquarian would probably be the only outsider that I would maybe be interested in. So how do you think this plays out, and who do you like, uh, Caitlin? How do you think this plays out, and um, who's going to be in your back pocket on Saturday? I think this is the type of race where we're going to maybe get a pretty legitimate pace in here. I think the wine or the wine steward can be close. I think Mystic Dan can be close, but I think your pace is going to come from Seize the Gray on the inside. I think Doorknock is going to go with him as well. So I definitely think the speed is going to come from those two horses. It's going to maybe set up for an off the pace mid pack type of a horse. Mind frame can also be pretty close. So I think it's going to set up for a horse potentially like Sierra Leone like Honor Marie, like Antiquarian, or like Resilience coming into this race. Um, It's still going to be a little bit of a toss-up for me. Sierra Leone is going to be a heavy, 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 heavy favorite in this race. With the equipment change, I'm confident that he can get the job done. But if I'm looking to maybe, you know, bounce off of someone else, I would think Honor Marie at 12-1 to would probably be where I would hang my hat at the moment. Caitlin Free, awesome stuff, uh, Caitlin. Great, great breakdowns. And, I, you know, I'm feeling the same way. I sort of get a feel, and I look at the board here, and that mid-range, those 12 to 1s. Honor Marie, I'm glad to hear you say, because Honor Marie really caught my eye, and Resilience caught my eye. And if I'm reading you properly as well, it's going to be tough for Seize the Gray to go, you know, to keep the pace up, right, you know, for, for a mile and a quarter here. But you think Seize the Gray and Doorknock, so do you think they end up fading um, or are they, you know, win, you know, play show type of horses? Or do you think they're going to set up to too much speed and it's going to cost them? I think it'll probably cost them. I don't think they're going to go super, super fast, but Seize the Gray will not be able to walk on the lead like he did in the Preakness. Doorknock's going to apply pressure. I think Mind Frame will apply pressure from the outside. Mystic Dan probably won't be too far away. And there's a couple of others. So I think the pace will probably be pretty legitimate in this race and i think there's an almost certainty that we will have three different winners of all three different races caitlin where can people uh, find you online on twitter on uh, tv your picks and uh, everything that you do 
So Twitter, you can find me at Caitlin E. Free on Twitter. You can also check out the Twin Spires page. You can check out Churchill Downs. This time of the year, I am at Churchill Downs, so you can always turn into the Churchill Downs feed. You can turn on the Twin Spires feed. So I'm on both of those channels at all times. We're going to be breaking down not only the Churchill cards. We will also be breaking down and featuring the Belmont Stakes card on Saturday. So we will have all of your needs over there on Twin Spires, and we'll have some experts breaking down those cards as well. But we're going to be doing a lot of stuff over the next couple of days with that Belmont card. We used to do the show on a daily basis um, out of the Meadowlands, uh, FanDuel Sportsbook, oh, yeah. but it was it was literally at the racetrack, and I wasn't in the sports book. I was in the actual. I was in the racetrack. <laughs> You want to meet some characters, I got to tell you. Oh, I wish you were there. You could have helped me a lot at, at the Metal Lens. <laughs> I, got, I got to tell you, but nothing like a racetrack, I got to tell you. Like, it's just, you know, I got goosebumps thinking about uh, some, some of the characters that I miss uh, right now. It was too bad, like, COVID shut it down for, like, mm-hmm. it's, you know, in New York, they shut it down for, like, two years or something like that. It was it was it took a long time to reopen. Uh, but, Caitlin, you're the best. I really always appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Excellent insight, as always. Uh, may the winners be yours on Saturday. Thanks for the time. Thank you so much, Gabe. Great, as always, to be with you again. There's uh, Caitlin Free with us, man. Hey, you can't get better breakdowns uh, than that. And uh, tomorrow night, we'll have more uh, guests with less informed uh, picks. Uh, everyone, it'll be the Friday night dark toss uh, on the Friday night free show. David Delano joins us next. Bring it. gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York G has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Crew. media markets in the country so it makes some sense but i gotta tell you philadelphia not far behind cleveland ohio not far behind i would guess that precedent is now set they now would be paying based on the last 12 months numbers they'd be paying an additional 81.6 million in taxes newswire only on sports grid Awesome stuff with Caitlin Free, man. She's uh, good. Like that, you, you 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 ask her about any horse, and she'll tell you like, well, you know, what place they finished, what happened in the race, why they won or lost in the last like six races that they've been in. Like unbelievable stuff uh, from uh, Caitlin Free. Follow her on Twitter. Uh, she predicted the the that member of the crazy Kentucky Derby. She predicted it. You know, people are like, oh my God, whoever would have predicted this trifecta? She did. All right, uh, that's why she works over at Churchill Downs. Uh, great stuff with Caitlin. All right, we're going to bring in Dave Delano. We'll get his thoughts on um, the NBA Finals. What's going to happen in Game 2 
uh, moving forward, but too good. The best of X, baby. We can't uh, forget about what's going on online. Bring it. So the best of X, and for people on the radio, we have, um, you know, there's normally a video, you know, sometimes it's a video. We got pictures to go along with it, but it works on the radio as well. And it's basically the funniest things or the most interesting things that I that I think I find uh, that I see during the day. And this one I got a good laugh out of, actually, about uh, Angel Reese. <laughs> it's like, this is too good. Uh, so, you know, listen, Angel Reese had 13 points and 10 rebounds uh, the other night, but she was 3 for 12. And um, OMG, it's uh, Birdman on Twitter says, Jonte Porter got a higher field goal percentage than Angel Reese, and he was trying to miss on purpose. <laughs> Tell me that's not good. <laughs> it's got like 5 million hits on Twitter, this thing. Uh, man, that's, that's good. Jonte Porter got a higher field goal percentage than Angel Reese, and he was trying to miss on purpose. Very good. Well done, OMG. at bird, man. And... Um, Listen, I sort of knew these dudes were doing something and stuff, but, like, whatever. You know, when these fighters retire and they're doing their little things after, I just ignore it. I, I like I like the real fight game. But speaking of the real fight game, so Masvidal and, um, and Nate Diaz are boxing each other. That's the whole thing. It's like, dude, you're MMA fighters. You're boxing each other. This thing's just stupid. But they had a press conference today in uh, in Anaheim. And you want to talk about lit. This thing got lit, and there's a lot of fake stuff out there, but this wasn't fake. Shout out to the uh, the crew over at uh, at Fight Hub uh, that filmed it and Perry Punch, Perry Punch News, uh, for posting it. All right. There's Masvidal in yellow. And there's there's Diaz's boys in black. Oh, hey, oh, hey. A couple of coconuts there. What do they call that? The, uh, the, the three-piece and a soda. And people go, people go tumbling. <laughs> it got real. You know, this guy casually threw a bottle at everybody. That sort of got lost in a mix. And here's Masvidal. So you know what? I can't lie. They got me sold. I want to watch it now. Let's bring in Dave Delano. <laughs> I'd rather watch that than Mike Tyson and, and Paul, actually. Dave Delano, get sports strong. What's up, Dave? How you doing, man? What would you rather watch? I'm good. Masvidal and Diaz or uh, or Tyson and uh, Paul? I'd rather watch anything over the Tyson and Paul. I, you know, I like, like Tyson like everybody else, but, I mean, 58 years old, I just don't want to see him fighting a 28-year-old. I mean, the fight getting canceled, I think it was bound to happen. They're still trying to make it work, even though they're saying he could, you know, possibly face life-threatening injuries if he gets in the wrong place. I, I, I don't want to see that at all. So anything over Tyson and Paul for me. I don't always agree with uh, with what Dana White has to say, but Dana White says, I don't want to see Mike Tyson lose to a jerk-off like Jake Paul. <laughs> me neither. And I, and I thought, you know what, actually, I think Dana, you know, it's hard to argue with Dana on this one, uh, actually. Okay, so uh, game one tonight, listen, man, all five starters for the Boston Celtics got in double digits. A lot of people wondered what Porzingis was going to bring to the table, including myself. I was like, all right, you know, what kind of an impact is he going to have on this team? Well, he stole the show early, and then the rest of the team took over. I think, you know, moving forward, if we're talking about an MVP, just, uh, you know, from a betting perspective, Jalen Brown, man, he was plus 600 before the series started. Now he's plus 300. But with all that being stated, I'm not saying it's a sweep. I'm not like, oh, Dallas are done. Dallas got effed up tonight and punched in the mouth, bro. They need to be better on Sunday. I still think this series goes at least six games. What's your take, and what do you think about uh, how game two is going to play out? Opening number is seven and 214. Yeah, I still think that this is going to go at least uh, six, ga- uh, six games as well. I mean, the way that it started tonight, now, a minute Boston came out here like a team that's been there before that looked like they were playing a meaningful game in the NBA Finals. And Dallas came out like they were just playing another NBA game on a Thursday night. And that first quarter really was just what was too much for them to overcome. I do, though, think Kyrie Irving is going to be a lot better. As bad as that first quarter was and as bad as most of the game was, there was a point there in the third quarter where, I mean, Kyrie Irving missed some really good looks that he normally knocks down that 
you know, when they cut it to eight, if he made some of those shots, it could have been closer. And I think that could have put some pressure on Boston. Um, even though it ended up being a blowout for Zingas played a lot better than expected. I haven't placed a bet yet for game two, but um, I'm actually still kind of leaning on the Mavericks in game two. I mean, what we've seen from the Celtics in the playoffs starting off in, in all three rounds, they've had one really good game at home, and then they've also they've struggled. And we saw against Miami, I mean, it looked like that was going to be a sweep easy. They did, you know, they did lose that second game. I mean, even against Cleveland, they got beat pretty convincingly in game two, even though they took care of the series. Um, they stole that first game against Indiana. So I just kind of the way that Boston's been going, I think that um, Dallas is going to play much better. Uh, Luke only had one assist. Kyrie played, you know, terrible, as I say, stated. And I think that Dallas, if they can just come out and have a better first quarter, I think that they've got a shot to win and definitely cover. Yeah, Kyrie 0 for 5 from 3. A couple of balls rattled out. He was off. Like, he was stumbling around and kicking the ball. And he had some problems. But he hit a couple of tough shots. And I said this earlier, Dave, too. You know, you look, all right, Luca had 30 points and and 10 rebounds. He had one assist. And I guarantee yeah. you, if you ask Luca, did you play well tonight? He'd go, God, no. I was terrible. And he passed up a bunch of open looks. Him as well. He missed shots that he normally makes, for, you know, the four-footers and the six-footers. I talked about it earlier, Dave. You know, he was under the basket a couple of times. You're two feet under the basket, and he passed it to Lively. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, like when well, you're, you know, like, no, you're the guy, not him. <laughs> like. gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows that QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. media markets in the country so it makes some sense but i gotta tell you philadelphia not far behind cleveland ohio not far behind i would guess that precedent is now set they now would be paying based on the last 12 months numbers they'd be paying an additional 81.6 million in taxes newswire only on sports grid And this show goes fast uh, when it's one hour because <laughs> we've got like you know five minutes left right now. Um, Dave Delano with us. I am Gabriel Morenci. Uh, Dodgers and Yankees, big time series in the Bronx uh, this weekend. Yamamoto on the hill for the Dodgers. Juan Soto left tonight's uh, game with discomfort in his left forearm. Last year, Aaron Judge got hurt when they played the Dodgers. Yankee fans are going to start to cringe every time the Dodgers. Uh, are around. 
So, yeah, Juan Soto left the game with a left forearm uh, discomfort. Very uh, – Dave's a great baseball handicapper. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm a Dodger fan. But, you know, the Dodgers don't play Yankee Stadium often. It's the one smart thing that baseball's done recently with the updated schedule where everybody plays everybody at least once a year. Last year I saw the Yankees at Dodger Stadium. Um, this year Dodgers go there. Fun series uh, there. And we got the Stanley Cup Finals that start on uh, Saturday. I'm taking the Edmonton Oilers to win the uh, the Stanley Cup. I like the Oilers uh, in six games. Who do you like in the Stanley Cup? And uh, you like any baseball tomorrow before we get you out of here? Well, I think it's going to be uh, really tight in the NHL. Uh, I haven't made a bet on it yet, but I'm actually leaning on the Panthers in seven. I think we're going to see a lot of a lot of three to two games in this series where you probably get some extra value, whatever team that you want, uh, betting on the win by a goal. But I'm going to go ahead and take the Panthers in seven. I think that they're going to get it done this year after um, falling short before. Um, in baseball, I you know, for tomorrow, this weekend, I, I do, even though they're a small underdog, it's hard for me not to back the Yankees. I know the Dodgers are great, but the way that the Yankees have played this season, um, despite, you know, with me maybe going on with Soto, plus 105, not a huge underdog. But right now, I mean, to, to – not take the Yankees as an underdog at home. The way that they're uh, the way that they're playing, I am leaning on the uh, Yankees tomorrow. Uh, they're just they're just hot right now. Dodgers have been a little up and down. I like them in that spot. Um, Guardians and Marlins also an interesting series. And the last time we talked about this, or last time I was on the show, the Guardians were getting ready to play the Angels, and you mentioned kind of blindly taking the Guardians, and despite what the uh, pitching matchup looks like tomorrow. Uh, Cleveland in that minus 120 range against the Marlins and Cleveland being one of the best teams to bet on all um, all year so far. Um, I like the I like the Guardians um, in that one tomorrow, too. I think that they're going to be good to look at. And um, the Royals have had some bullpen issues, but I think the Kansas City Royals are going to be another um, good team to look at this weekend. Yeah, it's an interesting series. You know, you said uh, the, the Marlins interesting. I'm thinking, man, the Marlins have never been called interesting, at least in the last 20 years. But I get where you're going with the Guardians. But, you know, look at the Mariners. I know they lost yesterday, but they bounced back with a win today. What are they now, like 11-2 and two in the last 13 off the top of my head? You know what I mean? They're, they've been winning games. They're a freaking under machine. Interesting series. But now they go from, uh, from Oak Town into the Midwest into Kansas City. The Seattle Mariners are minus 134. The total is eight and a half uh, in that game. And, and I'll tell you what, guys, you know, just quickly looking at this one, too. Bassett's on the hill for the Blue Jays tomorrow. We keep waiting for the buy sign, Dave. Listen, they lost those first two games to the Baltimore Orioles. Morale would have been at an all-time effing low, bro. They lose. They get swept in a four-game series to Baltimore. They come back. They scratch and claw. They get a split. Now they, this is it. I think the Jays, you know, looking at their body language, Guerrero's on fire right now. You know, if they can just get Bichette going a bit here, we keep waiting for the Jays to go on a little bit of a run. I think it's a fair price of minus 134. I'll take my chances with the Jays tomorrow, Dave. I got you. Yeah, the Jays are always uh, tough for me to trust, even though it looks like it is a good spot for them. Uh, the Jays seem to be, over these last couple of years, that team for me that even when it looks like a good spot, they're hard to trust. And the Baltimore been, Orioles seem to be a team that just keeps getting it done. Uh, you've, been, you've been bitten too many times. Uh, so you're weary of the uh, the Toronto Blue Jays. So, uh, Dave, you know, quickly in like 10, 15 seconds, you let people uh, know where they can find you online. Yeah, over on X at uh, Get Sports Strong. And if you want to check out my best bets every day, uh, picksandparlays.net or winnersandwiners.com. Hey, great stuff as always, Dave. Uh, sorry to rush you tonight, but we're up against it. Always oh, a pleasure, fun. my man. Enjoy the games uh, this weekend. Follow me on Twitter, everybody. Twitter X, at Sports Rage. We went 3-0 and tonight in the CFL to make up uh, for getting thrashed in the NBA. Uh, but for the record, tomorrow night, like I said, I do like the Toronto Blue Jays uh, over the Athletics. You know I'm taking the Dodgers tomorrow, baby, uh, with Yamamoto. But give me the Hamilton Tiger Cats to beat the Stampeders tomorrow and the under. Other than that, you're on your own. Later. Later.